of the biggest things is, and I'm so happy you brought this up because we as entrepreneurs, nobody sees sort of the back ground, right? Uh, right. So most people don't understand, like when we decide to do a test, it's sort of like, okay, I think, I think we're going to take the ship this way, right? right? The hard thing is that you have to get your whole crew and your team on board of the ship and you don't know if you're going the right way or not. And so if it doesn't necessarily work out and you have to change directions and change directions again, you have to sort of lead your team down this testing rabbit hole. And, and how do we know, like, how do we get them motivated to so, continue testing and getting the data when it's not really working? Another, another very good question. And part of that, again, just my answer, but consensus management. I'll pull everyone into the room and I'll say, I feel, I'm feeling left, but I want to hear what you guys say before I make a decision. Okay. And I always collect data from everyone. I tell them, I still have to make a decision. And if you're the person that said right and I go left, what I need you to do is get over it in 30 seconds. And because you need to be rowing to the left with everybody else. You cannot say, dang it, I wanted to go right and he didn't choose that, so now I'm going to mope. So that's part of our culture. All culture is express your opinion, but you know, if once we make a decision, you got to jump back on board. And so people that I say, you seem to be taking it easy today. Well, I didn't want to go left. Those people don't work for me. You have to be willing, which by the way, includes me. If I come into the team meeting and I say, guys, I'm thinking of going left and my entire team says, Jeff, trust us. We've been looking into this. You should go right. And I need to be willing to say, you know what? If everybody here believes that, let's give it a okay, shot. I, I have a follow-up question. I know uh-huh. this, that was my last question, but what's the difference between efficiency of motion and hustle and how do we tactically prioritize that? Oh, no, that's a perfect example because hustle is just motion. Hmm. I see people hustling all over, doing stuff that is never going to make them. We're going to use your example, never going to make them rich. You'll never be a millionaire. If I was digging holes in the front yard, then filling them, digging another one, then filling it with that dirt, that's hustle. People say, man, that guy's a hustler. He's out there digging every day. I am never going to make a dime from that. So, <laughs> What if you think it's the right thing? Because that's the thing that's tough. We're like, go it, move forward fast, but oh crap, it doesn't it matter right. what you think. That's what we established. That's yes. why we, we gave the Sam <laughs> Walton good. example, which is yeah. never be blinded by your own brilliance. Yep. What you think doesn't matter. Go ask farmers if that's who your product yep. is for. In the Priceline days, we went to discount stores and we talked to shoppers. And we said, okay, it doesn't matter what I think. What would you do? How much would you pay? When would you go? Do you care if there's frequent flyer miles? The answer is the market has to tell you that. It doesn't matter what you think. If, in fact, no one is walking up and paying you, then you were wrong. The, the, the market, markets make themselves.